everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. Let me tell you, it feels real good to be saying that. I had to pre-record an episode, then I did the IB for episode, and it's nice to get back to some sort of normality with these vlogs, right? Life as usual. And what a fantastic start to the week we've had, because as you've just seen, I was timed it right at my local charity shop. I was given backroom privileges. I've got a carry bag full of games, some for the collection, some to trade. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's my stack out the bag. From what I can remember, she charged me, I think, £13 for all of these. As I say, there's a mixture of some that I just don't own, so I'll pick them up. I didn't go for every one to establish whether it'd be worth it. I have had a quick look since on CEX, so I'll try to make you guys aware of the values as I go through them. At the Simpsons game, this hasn't got as much value as I thought. I think there's only £2 trading on this, and I think I already own it. The good old Mario Kart. I found this last week. Um, so yeah, uh, you never leave these behind. £9 tra trading on that one. Uh, two Spongebob games, uh, again not loads of value in these, couple of quid each maybe, um, but I don't own them so you know I'll put Spongebob games in my collection all day long if I don't already own them. Another one, never seen it before, Monster House, don't think there's much value in it but again never seen it, don't own it. Toy Story 3 on the Wii, uh, worth picking up but there's more value on the Playstation 3 version, uh, I think that's the version to find um, with that one. Another one that I've never heard of, Planet 51 the game. And then this one's decent. I think there's about £9 trading on this one. Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty. Um, I'm not sure which of the Ratchet and Clank games I actually own. Let's have a look. On my PS3 section down here. MNO PQ. Unless they're in the older red label section. Where are we? I've got a cracking time. Is that the only one I've got? That's the only PS3 one I've got. So yeah, um, I need that for the collection. Minecraft doesn't have as much value as it used to. I think there's like a five pound trading on these now. Uh, Destroy All Humans. And I think this was the pick of the bunch or maybe joint with Ratchet and Clank. I think it's like nine or 10 pound trading on Spider-Man 3. Um, always pick up Spider-Man games, there's always value in them. There's roughly, I think maybe about 35 quid here. Very roughly off the top of my head. I didn't add it all up, I just quickly went through it. Add that with the fines that I got a couple of days ago when I come back from holiday that I showed you guys on the end of the IB for vlogs. That's another 15. So yeah, um, probably just shy of 50 quid or so trading value here. So very, very happy with my charity shop fines since we've come back from Ibiza. And that's not everything. Still got my tattoos, look. Mm, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> the elephant is still very much in the room. We'll get to this and... Turn him around like the naughty boy in the corner. We're going to get to that later in the vlog. Um, but what I do have is three large parcels here. Let's go and sit down and open them, shall we? Right, okay. So as you can see, I've got some big boxes that I need to get into. Uh, it's been, like I say, a little bit of time since I've spoke to you guys. So hope everybody's doing well. Uh, like I say, it's just nice to be back, man. It's been a mad three weeks. It was a mad week in the run-ups going away. Then I was away. Um... And then it's been catching up since I've been back. So it's like, I can finally breathe. Uh, obviously I filmed the CEX lottery video, which didn't go as expected. Hopefully you guys have seen that on Wednesday. So we're gonna be doing a CEX trip, uh, hopefully tomorrow. We've got all these games that I just found in a charity shop. I've got to take that game back. And there's also something else that maybe I'll be taking, which we'll get to shortly. But let's have a look at these boxes then. Uh, the first one I'm not gonna open right now. This is uh, a return and is much requested in the comment section to the snack box service. Um, if you guys remember last time when I fed little man the seaweed crisps, much to his disgust. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait seaweed, uh, I was gonna call him seaweed boy then. <laughs> I gotta keep calling him that. Little man is with his grandparents today. So when he's back later in the week, me and him will sit down and we're gonna do the snack box together. So. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm not sure he is, but that's going to be coming later on this vlog. That reminds me as well, also later on this vlog, I'm going to be giving away the Mortal Kombat game. Loads of you guys have entered and got involved. I need to go through all the comments. We're going to get a winner together, so I'll be announcing that on this vlog as well. Um, right, okay, so that leaves us with a couple of bigger parcels to open. We'll go into this one first. This is non-video game related. I've really cut down on my trainers, my sneaker shopping habits. Um, there's only so many shoes you can wear, right? Video games, there's only so many you can play, but they take up a lot of room, they're not cheap. So I've definitely cut down on my trainer purchases in recent times, but these I had to have, and that's kind of where I'm at with trainers now, right? Because I've got so many pairs in the rotation that I have to really love them. 
and know that I'll get my wear out of them to purchase them. And when I saw these, I thought, yeah, man. Uh, so, no surprise to anybody, these are Air Max 1s, but these uh, have just come out and these are Air Max 1 bronze. I love these, man. I love like, the leather on the upper. I love the colour. These will go with all my sort of like autumnal car heart fits, right? So, yeah, really happy to have these. And these are actually still sitting, much to my surprise. I went online, I got these at Offspring at like 7 o'clock in the morning. I was there straight away with my de details to, to win a pair of these because I missed that in the past on so many pairs. But they're actually still sitting, much to my surprise. Um, so yeah, these are still available if anybody wants them. I'm sure they'll sell out at some point, but yeah man, I uh, love these, really happy with these. And uh, another pair for my ever increasing Air Max 1 collection. Uh, right, so let's move on to something video game related, shall we? This was a gift by a chap called Jack. I've got to give a massive shout out to Jack. Uh, he's packaged this really well. I'm going to be careful with it because my address is on the other side. I might have to go and grab a knife, so just give me a second. Okay, here we are, back with a trusty knife. Um, yeah, so I think Jack saw me speaking about this on the vlog that I pre-recorded before I went away, where I basically went around the room and spoke about uh, what changes I've got planned. That's something we're going to be doing on this vlog as well. We're going to start making one of those changes, so we'll get to that shortly. Um, but I mentioned this, and I say he was kind enough to reach out to me and send me this. And like I always say, guys, I never ask for anything, and I always make sure people are sure with it. And it means a lot. It really does when people want to send me things. So it's much appreciated, Jack. Massive shout out to you, my friend. Um, so let me get into it. Ah, so it's in this Sketches Sport box. Right, let's get into it. Right, okay, wow, so well packaged. Um, I'm just gonna open it so I can get into it, show you guys, don't think there's a note or anything in here. Right, okay, so basically, what this is, this is like professionally packaged, Jack. This is a white Wii U. Um, massive, massive thanks to Jack on this one. Very generous of him. Uh, I think Jack actually mentioned in one of his emails that he sent me that he saw on that video as well that I was discussing um, that once again this year we're going to be doing a fundraiser for Alzheimer's. So I think he'd emailed me and then he emailed me again after he'd seen that part of the video um, and sort of considered this his contribution to um, that charity which has touched his heart as well as mine. So um, I'll uh, ensure that there is something given to them on Jack's behalf um, in terms of this donation, if that makes sense, when the time comes later in the year when we do get around to do another charity run for Alzheimer's Research UK. But yeah, uh, very, very happy to receive this. I'm looking at my Kallax unit now. I'm thinking about just biting the bullet and going and paying the £40 and getting that company to switch the broken white Pro Controller over from my black one. Basically just switch the insides out uh, so I've got a white PS4. Now having the white Wii U, the only thing realistically that will be left is the Xbox One that I can pick up in white. Mine's a nice Xbox One Scorpio edition so I'm pretty confident that I can get like for like. I'll be able to sell mine somewhere. I've got the box and everything for it and then get a nice white Xbox One X. And the only thing that leaves is Mega Drive. A bit of a question mark over the Mega Drive. There's, the SNES being light grey anyway doesn't bother me. That's fine. Same as the silver PS2. I would like one of them fat white PS2s. I think the Japanese ones. Maybe get it modified so I could play UK games, UK games on it. <coughs> Apologies if I sound a bit nasally. I've been uh, struggling with a cold this past week. But um, So yeah, that will be it then. I need to fix the GameCube which is having issues. But we're getting closer to achieving the goal I set out of getting all white consoles. I think it's going to look fantastic when it's done. Um, but Jack, you've been a huge help in this. It's much appreciated, my friend. I'm going to give these a quick wipe down and we'll switch them over in a minute. Get my sort of profile loaded onto it. Famously, the white we use aren't very good in the sense of the storage. I think they've got very small storage, something like 12 gig, maybe even less. Um, but it generally doesn't affect me because I barely play the Wii U, if I'm being honest. Um, and I certainly don't need more than one game saved on it at a time and of course so you can buy an external hard drive for it as well so um, that will then free up my Wii U that I could potentially take to CEX or put it away in the loft for a rainy day should something happen to this one because I'm starting to like 
future proof myself and make sure I've got like a couple of each, one of each console in reserve if that makes sense so maybe in the loft because um, obviously as time goes on these consoles are getting older and seemingly getting more and more valuable and I don't want to keep selling consoles and then get to the point down the line where you need one right because yeah I don't want to be spending money on something that I could have sitting in the loft so that's kind of the loose plan but once again I've got to give a massive shout out to Jack on this one very very kind of you my friend and that kind of takes me to what I've been playing um I'm still playing Tiny Thought. That game is fantastic. Again, massive shout out to um, Strictly Limited Games for sending me the code on that one. I'm enjoying it so much, but boy is it tough. I'm thinking this is going to be one of the hardest games I've ever completed. Certainly platform wise. I mean, Cuphead was up there. Obviously, when you look at like, old school games and shmups, they're a different level, but it's getting very, very difficult. I think I'm on the 15th level of 30, so I'm almost halfway. Yeah, that difficulty curve, man. It, it's not so much... It is both the difficulty in the platforming. So there's like millimetre precision jumps when you think of games like Ori and games like that where you have like a double jump and everything has to be exact. But there's also like the puzzle element to it. There's also like a bit more... It's quite methodical in working out exactly how you're going to get past it. You get to certain points and you think this is impossible. And then it'll click. And it's very well designed. It's a fantastic game. Really, really enjoy myself um, playing it and... Hopefully, I'm not going to be too far away from finishing the second half of the game, but if it keeps getting harder and harder, wow, it's going to be some achievement getting that one finished, let me tell you. But yeah, really happy with my trainers, my Wii U. Uh, we're going to say opening the snack box with Little Man later on in the week. And that kind of takes me to the outline for the rest of this video. So as I say, we're going to go to CX hopefully tomorrow. Got all this stuff to trade in, so we'll be doing the usual charity shops, CX hunting. Um, then I am going to film the room tour that I've been talking about. Not my room, it's better than my room. Uh, I won't be showing all of that on the vlog, I might do a sneak peek, but that's going to be probably a Wednesday mainline episode. But I'm travelling down to Leicester to film that. Depending on whereabouts that is in Leicester, I might go to one or two shops. If it's near the city centre, I might call in a Game Shack or Leicester Vintage Toys. Or I'm going to work that out on the day because it's going to be a long day with a lot of filming. But in here... Guys, I've been putting off saying it out loud. I'm about 90% sure I'm going to be doing the Sega wall, right? I'm not 100%, but I want to do it. I'm 90%. I need to just finalise a few things. So what I might do on this vlog is take all the Wii U games out, Game Boy games, Saga and Ryu, etc. And put them elsewhere in the room. So get everything else kind of set up as to how it would be should I do the Sega wall, if that makes sense. So I can see how everything looks clear this area and if I'm happy with everything then take the units off the wall buy some of those more shells from Ikea and then begin the Sega wall so yeah loads to be excited about it's gonna be a very very busy week and uh, I'll be taking you guys along with me let's do it and there it is all tested cleaned up and put into place and it's, it makes me so happy every time I put a new white console in here another step closer as I say I'm tempted to go and get the ps4 sorted out that my good friend gibbo donated uh, for those that don't know it was broken but it's a nice white one uh, and i've been told by a local electronics shop that they'll switch it over for me for 40 quid i think so yeah we're getting closer all the time this took way longer than it should have to switch from the old one to the new one i mean nowadays right you can't just turn a console on and off i had to do all this transferring of data and then i couldn't put my new me user on this one whilst I still out on the old one and I had to reset passwords and I must have plugged and unplugged them about 10 times each but we're there now it's all sorted I'm delighted once again gotta give a massive shout out to Jack for donating that it's much appreciated I've got a massive smile on my face yeah one step closer like I say there's still an issue with the GameCube someone told me it's easy to switch over the shells on a GameCube so that might be a mission for a future vlog I do have a working black GameCube in the 2.5, so maybe I will try and switch that over at some point. But yeah, man, well happy with that. Okay, it's CEX run time. I've got this huge bag full of games and whatnot to trade in CEX. I found a few other things in the old 2.5 that I can get rid of. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see the staff's reaction to counterfeit Kirby game that I picked up. It'd be interesting to see if they spot it straight away, if they think it's an obvious mistake, or if they'd be bamboozled by it as well. I'm going to ask them, obviously, I'll let you guys know, but hopefully we'll find some stuff in the charity shops as well. Let's go and take a look.
Okay, so that was interesting. As soon as I got there, I took the box out and I said, what do you think of this? And within, I'd say two seconds, he said to me, that looks fake, that. So just goes to show that um, it's all about education, isn't it? And making people aware the red flags were there. He spotted it quicker than I did, to be fair. Um, but shout out to my local branch. Luckily, I've got a great CEX branch locally. Um, traded all my stuff in, they facilitated the return and everything. So yeah, um, pays to have a great local branch, but it's just um, one of them things, isn't it? No real harm done. Uh, the hunt goes on for a Kirby superstar. Let's have a look at a few more charity shops. Well, that pretty much sums up British Heart Foundation at the moment. Um, when I walked in and saw those games, I thought, wow. And then I thought to myself, why are these still sat on the shelves, right? It's either my lucky day or there's a reason why. And as we saw, there's a reason why when you're charging, what was it, like 15 pounds for Call of Duty on 360? I know they've gone up recently. Um, two copies of the same game at different prices, both considerably more expensive than CEX. It's, um, yeah, it's a strange, um, evolution of charity shops and video games at the moment I think sort of need to find that middle ground of knowing that there's value in them but also charging a realistic price maybe a price which is cheaper than you can get elsewhere but still um, making money for the charity I don't have the answers but I don't think having games sitting on shelves that no one's gonna buy more expensive than they are elsewhere is the answer but let's keep looking Okay guys, so there wasn't much worth picking up uh, in my trip to the locals. I did return um, the fake copy of the Kirby game, of which you know the staff noticed within seconds. I showed it to them, and the guy was like, this looks fake, within two, three seconds. So yeah, just goes to show you that there are CX staff members out there that are aware of these things, can spot the red flags, and I think it's just a case of um, consistency, which is often the case with any franchise store, not just CEX, but luckily, my local CX is fantastic. We've got all that resolved. I traded in all the stuff. I did decide to keep a few of the games. Um, I kept these for the collection. <laughs> Just games that I didn't own or there wasn't enough trading value to make it worth taking them in. But um, it's a few hours later. It's now the evening and I should be gaming really. I need to be cracking on with Tiny Thor. But I'm thinking about making some changes. So I love the Rugrats, and I love this standee. I love it because the colours, it pops, and every time I look at it, it kind of takes me back to that time of life when I had no worries, and I was sitting in my grandma's house. 7.30 a.m., 4.30 p.m. every day watching the Rugrats. Yeah, great time in my life, right? Before the stress of adult life, and I love it for all those reasons, but I just feel like I could better utilise this space. I think I said on a vlog or two ago that I'm thinking about putting a different Bang & Olufsen CRT TV, my MX4000, which is a smaller one, here hooking up a Wii and PS2 and like using all this space that I've got here 
um, to be able to play light gun games and Wii games and things like that. So that would make sense from a practical point of view. That's not something I'm going to be doing right now because I need to get the TV out of storage. But another thing I've been thinking is I could potentially look at maybe doing like a God of War display with my shield, which has never had a permanent home, and this awesome statue here. Moving that would sort of free up some space here, which would allow me to do different things, maybe have a permanent camera set up. So my plan is to kind of see if I can get the shield in the corner and then have this statue in front of it. I'm not sure it's going to work. It's just one of the things that I want to sort of mentally tick off the list to see if it will or won't work before I then go ahead and bring the uh, Bang & Olufsen TV down here and get the uh, gaming area set up. Well, that's definitely not going to work. <laughs> I hugely underestimated um, sort of how prominent this would be on the shelf. I thought it would sit a lot further back, stupidly. Um, obviously, I'm never going to be able to get this and the God of War statue on here. Um, back to the drawing board. I love this piece. Like, it's just, yeah, it's just proven so hard to find a home for it that it just kind of it lives here, which is fine. Not the end of the world. Moving it, I only go out there to train. But uh, it would be nice for it to have a permanent home. This up there it doesn't really work. I don't love it. Um, not compared to the Rugrats standee. So yeah, like I say, sometimes you have to try these things, right? Just tick them off the list. This has very much been ticked off. Okay, that is level 15 done on Tiny Thor. So I'm exactly halfway in. I keep saying it, but man, I love this game. Um, but God, it's so difficult. Anybody in the comments that's playing this game, please let me know. I'd love to hear anybody else's thoughts on it. See how everybody else is getting on. It's not just me struggling, but as much as I'm enjoying this, um, I might call it a night with this game now because with it being a Switch game, it's the sort of game that I can play in the house or whenever. It's a lot more accessible. Tonight is my gaming night, so I'm thinking about getting my teeth into something a bit meatier, if you know what I mean. A bit more of a sort of sit down and play for a few hours game, right? Maybe... I don't know, I've been thinking a lot lately about playing like a Call of Duty campaign. I know a lot of these have now been backwards compatible on the Xbox, so I might pop in an old Call of Duty and play for a campaign, something like that. But we'll see. I might just end up playing this all night. <laughs> so I decided to fire up the old Xbox. I've got uh, Modern Warfare 2 currently installing. I'm going to start the campaign. But until then, I'm going with the old classic, Sensible World of Soccer. It's been a long time since I've played this. Let's get into it. Look at this classic lineup. Well, this is not going well. Derby County and Dean Storage have just put one past me. I've completely forgot how to play this game. I used to be the man at this back in the day. Not anymore, and certainly not one-handed. Well, does anybody remember this scene? Gotta be one of the most iconic moments in gaming, right? Cheese! Okay, so it's the next day, and guys, I was up till like 1, 1 1.30 last night playing Call of Duty. It's fair to say I properly got involved with this. It was a little bit of a steep learning curve. It's been such a long time since I played a first person shooter. The first 10 or 15 minutes I was thinking to myself, maybe these games aren't for me anymore, but as I kept playing, I just started falling in love with it. I had to literally prize myself away from this. I don't know if Modern Warfare 2 is the best solo campaign of all the Call of Duties, I'm no expert. I just remember the fan for all when this came out. This was kind of the era where I dipped my toes in and played a little bit online, never very much. I was never very good at it. Um, so that's why I decided to play this campaign. Thus far I'm really enjoying it. But let me know in the comments which is the best Call of Duty campaign. I don't want one that's too long. Um, but yeah, I've got no clue uh, as to whether this is a good campaign or not. But so far I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, I'll definitely be finishing this one. But as you can see, we're joined by a little man. Say hello. Hello. Good lad. That can only mean one thing, right? What's this? Snack box. Snack box. You remember what happened last time? Yeah. What happened last time? The seaweed. <laughs> Have you got over it yet? Yeah. Yeah? But not when you call me seaweed boy. You don't like being called seaweed boy. So you definitely don't want to be called seaweed boy anymore? No. Right, okay. So you had a good idea though, didn't you? Where are we going today? Uh, the 
cinema to watch the new turtles. Taking in to go watch the new turtles film. And what did you say we could do with the ones we like? Take to the cinema. So we'll take the nice snacks to the cinema. Or sneak them in. I don't know, back in the day I used to think you had to sneak stuff into the cinema. I remember I used to go with my grandma and wear big coats and ram them full of cans of coke and sweets, but I'm pretty sure they can't stop you from taking your own food in. I don't know if that's an urban myth or not. Uh, right, okay, so this is, uh, what's it called? Tasty Treats. Uh, try Treats, I think it is, trytreats.com. You can get 15% off if you just type in Retro Ghetto if you're interested in this. I'll put a link in the description below. But it's all capitals, Retro Ghetto for 15% off. Uh, it's really good fun, actually. Uh, those that watched it last time will know. You were right, it was a smaller box. You said it was a smaller box, didn't you? Yeah. It is a smaller box. Last time, I think it was, like, higher. Yeah, sure it was. and wider. And wider. Right, okay, so last time it was Korea. And there were some interesting snacks, weren't there? Yeah. Some nice ones, some not so nice. Yeah, we had some chocolate mushrooms. There was chocolate mushrooms, yeah. Right, so let's see what we've got this time. Yeah. Oh! And it is... You don't know what my flag that is, do you? No. It's not started playing Parito yet. <laughs> Mexico. Interesting. So we're going to have any Mexican snacks. Mm. Right. Oh my god. Lots in here. You can't look yet, you're spoiling it. You have to wait. <laughs> It's like Christmas. Welcome to Mexico. This month's treats come to you from the beautiful country of Mexico, officially named as the Estados Unidos Mexicanos. Mexico is the third largest country in Latin America, blah, 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 blah. These civilizations were the first to cultivate cacao, which paved the way for worldwide distribution of chocolate. Thanks, Mexico. Mexicans also love their spices, herbs, both of which you will be represented in this snack box, like chicoritas and takis. Uh, if there's anything too spicy, we don't think we'll be giving them to little man. But yeah, so that's that. Loads of interesting facts about Mexico, and then we've got what's in the box. And for those that were interested in this, you can play along at home. You can kind of tick it from best to worst. And they are good fun. If you think it's value for money, I'll let you work out that for yourselves. But uh, let's get into it, shall we? Yeah. Yeah? Let's get into it. Have you got your drink ready in case there's something you don't like? Look, next to me. Right, we've got a full pack here of biscuits. Oh, These are called Maria's Cookies. Oh. So, do you want to try it first or shall I? You want to do it? Yeah, well, this is not what I expected. I thought they'd have like chocolate on them or something. They're just plain. This just plain not, looking biscuits. This is not what I expected either. You try it then. It says the vanilla flavour. Mm. Yeah? yeah. Oh, they are bad, aren't they? Mm. I'm taking them. <laughs> taking them, are you? Nice. They are nice. Yeah, these are vanilla flavour. Mm. I think basically what the front is, it's telling you you can put stuff on them yourself. I expect them to have stuff on them, but... They'll be lovely with a cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So we're happy with them. Mm -hmm. What's next? What is that? Mm -hmm. Bubu Lubu. <laughs> Bubu Lubu. <laughs> Marshmallow and strawberry. <laughs> Looks interesting. <laughs> Can you eat that on. Have a drink, wash it down. Wow, this looks uh, interesting. It's like half eight in the morning as well, so. Not the most nutritious of breakfast. Can I try? Yeah, you have a go, mate. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? That's a big bite. I love it. You like it? I love it. Eat it then. Yeah? I'm tasting it. Okay, you can have that one then. I'm not sure about that one. The texture's not there for me. It tastes very... You know, like, the things have got a lot of gelatin in them. They're quite... Well, it's different to the marshmallow I'm used to. And the strawberry's like a... Like a jelly, rather than a jam. I, I Do you really like that one? Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's a win for him. Not for me. <laughs> what is that? Look at that. Is that a sweetie? Paul Perindo. So it's made with real fruit. What is it? Is it some sort of sweet? It looks a bit weird. It looks a bit weird to me. I don't think I'm going to like it. You shouldn't judge it on what it looks like. Very sweet. No, you're not having that one. Uh, too sweet. Spicy. Are you not having it? I'm not doing that to you. Not after. <laughs> Daddy, are you not having it? I'm mm -hmm. not taking it. 
No, I'm not going to do that to you. Spices are the line we draw. Dad, Seaweed's one thing, Dad, but I'm not giving you that. Dad, shall we not take it? No, we're not taking that. That's, uh, it says it's made with real fruit, so it really threw me off. I was just expecting like a, he has a lot of fruit-based snacks. But yeah. it's like spicy. It says actually, hot and salted tamarind pulp candy. Yeah, that's definitely not for me, that one. And, uh, no, that's definitely not for me. No, that's definitely not for you. Mm. I'm not going to do that to you. Right, next. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. Chocoritas. Chocoritas? Chocoritas. Mm. I don't know if it's mint. I like mint chocolate, don't I? Mm. The uh -huh. reason I say that is because they're green, look. Chocoritas. Let's find out. Yeah, find out it is. Oh, they're like little M&Ms. Circles. Mm. Let me try it first. No, that's right. This is right on my street. No. You don't like it? No. You don't like mint chocolate, do you? <laughs> you don't even have mint toothpaste to be fair. I really like them, I'm a big mint chocolate fan, so they're a win for me. You're not happy, not having it. Uh, Sit up straight. I'm not even having it actually. I like them ones. Big um, fan. What is this? Oh chocolate! Milk caramel lollipops. I love that. These are called La Wikita. Can you say La Wikita? La Wikita. Close enough. Probably better than mine, actually. No, that's too hard for my old man to. No, let me suck. It's just toffee, isn't you it? You just need to suck in. Nice, isn't it? I like yeah. it. I'm taking it. Yeah, we'll put that away. You can have that another day. Oh. Okay. It's rock hard. It's like. Daddy, that's because you need to suck it. It's giving me cavities just thinking about it. Daddy, that. you just need to suck it. Yeah, you can have it another day. Okay. We'll pop that over there. Right, next. Nestle. Interesting. A king's on it. He is king. Carlos V. Carlos? Was he a king of Mexico? He's Interesting. Carlos? Imagine having an Elizabeth II chocolate Carlos, bar. Carlos, Dad. Yeah, we know a Carlos, don't we? Yeah. It's not him. He's yeah. not got any gold teeth, has he? No. <laughs> He's got a gold crown instead. Mm -hmm. It's different Carlos. Right, okay. Made in Mexico. It's a chocolate bar. I don't know if it's just milk chocolate. I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's just have a look. Try it. It's a bit broken, obviously they've come from the other side of the world. Um, that's too broken. Is that nice? Can I try it, Dad? Right. It's probably fine. I'm going to say it's okay. You know sometimes when you go abroad and like the milk separates in the chocolate, it just looks a bit suspect. So I'm not going to be giving you that. It's just chocolate, right? I think it's gone a bit off. Uh, so I'm not going to slander the company and start saying it's off, but it looks a bit iffy to be giving it to a five-year-old. So we're going to move past that one. It's just chocolate uh, anyway. It's nothing exciting. Mm. Right, next. Lanita Croa. I love that. You know, how do you know? Because it's a frog. Yes, and I know I love it. Milk chocolate with crispy cereal. Hopefully this chocolate's Daddy, in better, Nick. Daddy, you know I picked it. Once again, the chocolate's gone a bit funny though, look. Daddy? Oh. Yeah, this ain't good, man. Now, you can see how much these have really melted and then been reformed. I'm not adverse to trying it, but I don't want... I'll say that, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice, but I'm not going to risk giving it to little man. Ooh, ooh. Daddy, can I pick it? But it's nothing exciting. It's just chocolate with a bit of like yeah, cereal in it. So can I put the next thing out? Yeah. Well then. I'm going to pick this. Yeah? Okay, what's that? I don't what do you it. think it looks like? It's like a wafer, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like a wafer. This one's called Bokadin. Hmm. Doesn't really give much else away. It just looks like a little wafer bar. Yes, yeah, true. See. Oh, that's definitely alright, Dad. Mmm, this one looks better. Don't like it? Mm -mm. No, I don't either. It tastes a bit stale. Mm. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, snack box. This hasn't been good, I don't think. Not this far. What have we got here? Japanese style peanuts. I'm not having peanuts. You don't like peanuts, do you? No. You want to just try one? Yes, I'll just try one. Good lad. Look at that. That's the spirit. Get into it for the video. Is it nice? Yeah. Just chew it. 
It's like a crisp. You like salt and crisp, don't you? Chew it. Don't like it. Not a fan. They're okay. They're just peanuts. Too salty. They are very salty, right. I'll have these in here as a snack when I'm gaming with a nice beverage. But nothing special then. Right, next. We've got these, though. We've got these in the cupboard. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, we know what those are. Nice. Everyone's favourite joke. I think that's Dad, shall we, got, shall we take them? Well, let me just eat these first. These are actually called Nice, I believe, right? Everyone's favourite dad joke. Oh, these are nice. I don't know why I'm tasting these. I have these all the time. I don't need these. No. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice. Yeah. I'd say they're nice, but I prefer the standard ones we get here in the UK. Yeah, Texture's a bit different. Take them, shall we? Okay. Next, we've got crisps. Oh. Hot chilli pepper and lime. No. No. They're not for you, are they? No. I'll take one for the team. I'll try these. No. I'm not big on spices myself. No. These are called takis. I'm sure I saw these in Barcelona. Uh, not Barcelona, where did they get that from? Ibiza. I think these are quite big in Spanish regions. As you can see, they're very red. Can you ask them how red they are? Oh, they're very red. They're not nice. <laughs> not nice, Dad. <laughs> not nice. Not nice, Dad. <coughs> are they not nice? <laughs> they're not nice. It's, <laughs> it's not that they're not nice. There's something Moorish about them. They're just very intense, man. Oh. They're very spicy. And then add the lime as well. And I'm guessing in Mexico, this is like standard. <laughs> in my eyes water. Wow. It's not a bad flavour. And I can imagine like with a pint of beer, I can but see I why need... people would enjoy these. But... I am Andy, I'm not having them. No, it's too intense for me. It's far too spicy. And then you get that lime as well. Yeah, it's far too spicy. It says on it, new look, same intensity. Well... I can believe that. I'm not going to throw them away. I think they'd be quite nice, like I say, with a beer or something. The last, last one. Thing. What's that? I don't know. It says paleta. Chocolate covered marshmallow. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you don't want to try this one. I don't want to try this one. You don't want to try this one. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Wait, look, you can only have this if you have one of these. You want to try one? No. You want to try one? I'm not having <laughs> I was only joking. Right, then, let's have one of these. Can I try it one Again, the chocolate's gone a bit funky, look. Yeah. I think this is fine. You get it quite often when you go to like hot countries, right? Where they kind of they think the milk separates, something like that. Yeah. This is fine. I've eaten chocolate like this many times. It's just... Okay, we're back. I had a small issue with the recording, but we're all sorted now. I was saying, like, I've had many, many chocolate that's been separated from the sun abroad that it never bothers me. It was only that one that just looked a bit iffy. It was probably just a collection of milk, but it looked like it could potentially be something that mould. Um, I don't know if it was, I'm not going to slander the company, just I'm not going to feed it to a five year old. This one looks okay, I think there's just a little bit of separation of the chocolate. You want to taste it? Yes. Let's have a little taste then. Let go, no. clinging on to that. You don't like it? No. I thought you were going to like that. Oh yeah I do. I can taste the niceness. <laughs> the niceness has come through? Yeah. No, let me taste it. That's another winner. I think it's horrible. That's me. Right, all in all, I've not been impressed with Mexico. Sorry, guys. Big fan of the country. Been there and already loved it. However, the snacks... Yeah. I think, sadly, listen, you have to do these things honestly. What well, a massive shout out to the company for sending me this stuff. There was quite a few issues with some of the chocolate. Um, and it's not a cheap service. So I think if you're going to pay... I think it's like £25 or something. I don't want to misquote it, so I'll put it on screen. No. Obviously, you can get 15% off if it's something you're interested in. But... I think if you're going to spend kind of premium prices, you don't want the chocolate to turn up it's looking like it's melted, been reformed, and looking a little bit suspect. So, what was your favourite, mate? Um, I just need to look through and see which one mine. Okay, I'll talk about mine then while you're doing that. I enjoyed these vanilla biscuits. These are going to be lovely with a cup of tea. Um, I enjoyed these because I like mint chocolate. These are interesting. If you like spicy and intense things, I'd highly recommend these, but they're a little bit too much for me. 
What did you enjoy? Uh, I enjoyed these. No, not nice biscuits. No. Got them in the cupboard. Um, no, not them. Sit down. Uh, I know what's the best. I know what's the best thing. What? Chocolate. That. Yeah. The marshmallow chocolate. <laughs> that was your favourite, was it? The strawberry one. Oh, you liked that one, didn't you? Yeah. You liked the strawberry one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was vile. This was like a fruit, spicy fruit yeah, snack. Yeah. Obviously, Mexicans love spice, yeah, don't they? So. Yes, I'm please. the winner of the snack sometimes. If you want. I'm right. the winner. Okay, massive shout out to everybody. Thank you for yeah. watching. As I say, there is code RetroGetter in capitals down below. Hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know. Um, a shout out to the company once again. But if you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the comments so we can do this again. Say bye to everybody. Bye. Peace. Too much milk in this tea, but it'll do. Mmm, they're good. <laughs> Does this mean you enjoyed the film? <laughs> was it good? How good was it? Yes. Out of ten, what would you say? 200 out of 10. Yeah. I mean, I'm a pretty harsh critic, but to be fair, it was really good. Really enjoyed it. Definitely recommend. Yeah. Guys, the day has just disappeared. Um, it's late into the evening now. Obviously, it's been a busy day eating snacks with Little Man and cinema trips and. Yeah, I've been getting a few things prepared for tomorrow. As I say, tomorrow's the day we're going to film that fantastic game room. I'm excited to see it. Never mind, record it and edit it. Hopefully that'll be Wednesday's video as you're watching this. So keep it locked to the channel. And uh, hopefully we'll have a nice room tour coming on Wednesday. That's the plan. Um, as I say, I won't be vlogging too much of that. But with it being in the Leicester area, I don't think it's too far from Leicester City Centre. So if I've got time, we're going to do some game hunting tomorrow. I'll nip into the fantastic game shop. We've got Leicester Vintage Toys. There's a big CEX there. There's all sorts going on. So hopefully, after I record the footage of this game room tour for Wednesday's video, we'll be able to fly into Leicester City Centre and do a bit of game hunting. But uh, yeah, tonight I'm just going to chill with my brandy and tea, as you've just seen. I'm going to play a bit more Call of Duty. I'm just going to have a chilled one, uh, recharge the batteries a bit, and I'll check in with you guys tomorrow in a bit. Retro Ghetto. Morning guys, so it's the next day from where you saw me last night and uh, I didn't end up doing my changes and I'm going to bed, which is a good call. I'm here at this games room I've been teasing. This I've just poked my head in, I haven't filmed properly yet. I'm going to give you guys a quick sneak peek of what I'm here to look at. This is one of two games rooms that you're going to see on Wednesday, a mainline episode on the channel. So keep it locked to the Retro Ghetto, you do not want to miss this. Take a look at this. I told you it was going to be a sneak peek. Wow. I'm going to check in with you guys in a bit. I'm going to go and film here and enjoy this room. Okay, so I've just finished filming the tour of what is genuinely one of the best game rooms I think I've ever been in. And uh, now we're going to look at the doubles. Now, when I say doubles, it might conjure up images of a, a box of a few games. We're talking like a shed of doubles. So, just to give you an idea, this is one bag. <laughs> Boxes and boxes full. So I'm gonna have a little look. Let's see if there's anything that I can buy from my own collection. Been rude not to while I'm here. I'm starting in this bag. <laughs> see, this looks like my dream come true. You know, I go to a shop and this is what I walk into. I love digging through all. Just a vintage 1977 um, Millennium Falcon. Oh, we'll get to the uh, Star Wars collection. Um, so I see you've got a lot of tool space in here, so that's. Um... <laughs> It's nice to see that there's a lot of practical stuff going on as well. And is this a treadmill? Yeah. Because I see that gets used loads. It looks like <laughs> prime, no need for that. prime position. Wow. See, this could just be another games room. You've got Mega Drive games down here. Mm -hmm.
Okay, as you can see, I'm back. I never made it to Leicester because, well, I think I saw that many games in Kev's shed that any sort of game hunting after that would have been a disappointment. Also, I was there for most of the day. Shout out to Kev and his hospitality. We had lunch together and, yeah, we spent a long time talking about all things video games. And Guys, don't miss Wednesday's video. This isn't just like a YouTuber talk to get you to watch the video. This is like, it's a very, very special game room. Um, I'm so happy that I had the privilege of filming it and I can share it with the world because, yeah, the love and craftsmanship that's gone into that room is, yeah, it's admirable and it's given me a lot of ideas for my own game room and I can't wait to start editing it. So as soon as this vlog is done, I'm going to jump on that, put it together and it should be this Wednesday's video, so keep it locked to the Metro Ghetto. But yeah, fantastic, amazing day. Massive shout out to Kev. Uh, on the way home, I did pop into my local charity shop, so we'll look at that first. I picked up just one game, Spyro, A Hero's Tale. I don't think the PS2 Spyro games were very critically well received, right? And this one, um, judging by the bloom on the back, you sort of play as different characters. There's Sergeant Bird, Blink, Sparks, Hunter. So I think you kind of switch between different animal um, characters. And yeah, never heard much about it, but it's £1.95. It's only £2 trading, but I bought this just because uh, it was an omission from my own collection. So yeah, I figured it was one to pick up for a couple of quid to put in my own collection. And as you guys have seen from the small bits of footage that I got for this vlog at Kev's. Um, he's got a shed full of doubles, full. Um, which, you know, says a, a lot about how many games this guy's got, right? Um, there was a collection within a collection, and then there's a loft full, and then there's toys. It's mad. We're not gonna go into it. We'll see more of it on Wednesday's video. But um, I did leave with some games. So we're gonna go into those games now. Um, the first one that I wanted to talk about is Blue Dragon on the Xbox 360. So this is a 2008 Microsoft exclusive RPG made by Hironobu Sagaguchi. Uh, he's the father of the Final Fantasy series. Hopefully I said that correctly. My uh, Japanese pronunciation might not be the best. Um, this is one of them games. It's very highly regarded. I often hear people talk about this as a hidden gem. And I kind of always expected this one to go up in value. With it being, I think, a 360 exclusive. An RPG and, uh, like you say, having links to uh, Final Fantasy. I think some of the character design was done by people um, that were working on Dragon Ball Z. So there's a lot going for this game, but it's never really rocketed in price. It's still very affordable. Um, but yeah, just one that I'd always intended to pick up. Uh, I never quite got around to it before. So when I saw this in Kev's shed, uh, I figured this was a good time to pick this one up. <laughs> Speaking of Dragon Ball Z, uh, another one which caught my eye. I think this was like the first one that caught my eye on one of his many boxes in the shed. And that is Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi. Tenkaichi? Help me out, right? I don't know how you pronunciate that one either. Um, my understanding of this is that it's like a one-on-one -on -one fighter, but it's not on a standard sort of one-on-one -on -one plane. So it's not just like two people facing off at ground level. Um, looking at the back of the box and from footage I've seen previously, I think you can kind of go up and down. You'll be seeing it on screen now, so you'll have a better idea than myself. I've not really had too much time um, to look into this one or do much research since I've come home. All I know is that it's a Spike developed 2011 game that I don't already own. Um, I did start to watch through the Dragon Ball Z universe with Little Man last year when I found that fantastic box set in a charity shop. Um, but yeah, uh, just, you know, it's the artwork, isn't it? It's so striking. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be adding this to my collection. And then, this wasn't actually from the shed. This was from the retro games room, because there's more than one games room. Uh, this was from his personal collection. I mentioned that I didn't have it. And Kev, being the very generous man he is, sort of made me leave with this. And that is, on the Super Nintendo, Clay Fire. I've got big big nostalgia for this 1994 visual concepts developed fighter. I remember back in the day renting this from a blockbuster or an equivalent, I can't remember, it might have been Hollywood movies or one of them sort of similar things to blockbuster and I got it back, I was so excited when you look at the artwork on the front, I hated it, it was dreadful, I remember thinking ah oh. and I had nothing for the weekend but this game, I had to keep playing it even though I wasn't enjoying it and that kind of weird nostalgia that I've got to as a collector where even a game that I didn't enjoy, I really want to add it to my collection because it's just nostalgia. It's just something that I did have as a child. Well, I did have experience of playing as a child. And yeah, um, any day that I can add a Super Nintendo game to my collection, massive shout out to Kev, of course, for this one. Um, the box isn't in great condition, but we know I'm not a mint collector. It's all there. And like I say, anytime I can be adding uh, a Super Nintendo game to the collection, it's a good day for me. This was done in like a sort of claymation style which was very sort of revolutionary for the time right um 
I just didn't enjoy it as a younger child. Maybe um, it's held up better than I remember. I'll give it a go and we'll find out down the line, right? Um, and then, what was probably my find of the day in Kev's shed. Uh, it's a good job because we kind of like had to get through lots of boxes to get to this because I could see it in like a clear plastic tub but underneath about six other tubs. I didn't really know much about it but the artwork was so striking and it's a big box which always catches my eye, right? And that is Arcana Hearts 3. So as I say, I didn't know much about this one. It's a 2011 one-on-one -on -one fighter. And from what I can see, it's a fighter that features Japanese schoolgirls. So yeah, read into that what you will. But this is a fantastic limited edition set to have. Love the artwork on the front, like I say. And then there's so much going on inside here. So we've got the soundtrack. We've got the game still sealed. Uh, when I showed Kevin that this was still sealed, we had to go and check to see what condition his was in, because obviously we're leaving with a better condition one. And his whole thing was sealed. <laughs> we're going to do this and that whole box had never been opened, so we knew straight away that I was cool to have this one. Um, but look at this art book, guys. It's like hundreds of pages of art. Really nice collector's edition, this one. Really nice. And there's going to be a lot of shout-outs to Kev, right? So I'm just going to say one last thank you, because... Kev would not take any money for these games. I tried my best. I even tried to like covertly get his email address from him so I could just sort of like send him something on PayPal without him knowing. He wasn't having it, wasn't falling for it. It's an absolute legend, Kev. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's funny the way that word works, right? And how hobbies can bring people together. From me mentioning a relevant, a relatively flippant comment on one of my vlogs saying that I need some sort of like printers or sign makers to help me out with my kiosk and then his company and him getting in touch and then it's just great the way that this hobby can bring people together and uh, yeah I feel very fortunate uh, to have met Kev through those means and hopefully um, yeah it's the start of uh, a long uh, friendship but yeah uh, really happy with all the games that I came back with courtesy of Kev and I just can't wait for you guys to see the room tour but there's more than that he actually gave me a couple of other things first thing was one that I already knew I was going to be getting because this is something that I mentioned to him that I wanted when I visited um, his factories. And that is this clear Perspect box. This is for my Mario All-Stars console box. So it was like the only piece of Nintendo cardboard left in my room that doesn't have a protective case on it. Um, I'd have been happy with just one of the flimsy, rubbishy kind of boxes that like the Super Nintendo games come on, right? But Kev being Kev and with his company, they don't do anything by half. So he's giving this real high quality uh, box. They made this specially for me. It's got like a little sliding door on the bottom and uh, yeah, I'll be putting this on the console very shortly. I sent Kev the measurements for the shelf as well, so it should fit exactly where it currently is. And the last thing he gifted me was this. So this is a little bit of an insider joke, right? This um, lighter fluid. He always bemoans the fact that I use Mr. Sheen and Polish for getting labels off my games. He always keeps telling me this is the stuff I've got to use and I'm always like, yeah, 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 Mr. Sheen's the one. Um, but he was insistent that this is the right stuff to use. He even did me a quick demo whilst I was there and it did work very well. Uh, there's a couple of games I'm going to go and try this with shortly to test it out. Uh, so we're going to get to that in a second. But yeah, an amazing day. Um, right, let's get this box put in its protector and let's see if we can get a couple of labels off that I've been struggling with for a few weeks. And with that done and fitting perfectly, that's one of the last pieces of Nintendo cardboard in the room that needed protecting. Yeah, it's nice to tick a box that's been needing to be ticked for a while. Uh, we're now going to take the trusty lighter fluid, test it out, see if it's as good as Kev says it is. Like I said, there's been a couple of tricky labels. This one's been haunting me for a while on Pack Panic, because it's right on the spine. So I think that'll be a good test for the lighter fluid. Okay, so Kev said to put it on quite liberally, which is what I've done. He said you don't even need to let it soak. So we're going to go straight in, see if I can peel this off. It's hard to do it in one end. So far so good, right? A little bit more on. Okay, so that's pretty much come off. What I'm doing now is trying to scratch the last bit off. Well, I've got to say, it worked a treat. 
This bit here, don't worry about that, that was already me. That's why I didn't take it off, because when I started to peel it, that's what happened. And that's why I just left it on the spine. So yeah, if I'd used this from the start, it might have been a better result. So now I've had a test run that was quite successful. Let's step it up a notch with a more expensive game, Fire Shark. This is a nightmare of a sticker. It's almost like a plastic, almost like a security one. Had, I did have a go at it, and it sort of looked like it was... Yeah, you can kind of see it just there, look. It looks like it's going to take a bit of the ink off. So I'm thinking I'm going to try the lighter fluid. I'm going to go from this end uh, and try and peel it upwards. I'd love to get this off because it's so annoying having that right on the spine. Okay, I'm officially a believer. I got it off. This was never going to come off without any damage because of the nature of the sticker. And you can see where I previously tried to peel it off and some of that damage had already happened and I just thought, you know what, forget it, stuck it back down. That looks so much better. Like I said, there was always going to be a bit of slight damage and there's still a bit of like sticker residue, but I don't want to go too far because you can see there's a bit of damage to the paper already, but it's so much better than having that big white ugly sticker there. So yeah, all in all, can't fault the lighter fluid. And that is going to do it for another Ghetto Vlogs. Another great week. I didn't quite get as much time as I would have liked to have done things in the room, game room changes, but until I start moving that wall around, there's not really much I could do. Whilst I have kind of come up with a plan about moving games around, if I was to do it now before I put everything on that wall, I'd end up with one of my collections just being in purgatory, which basically means all over the floor. I don't need that in my life. So uh, whilst I've got a plan, I'm gonna wait until that wall was done. So hopefully on the next vlog or two, uh, we will be in a position where we can do that. But guys, there's genuinely never been a better time to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Uh, we've got that fantastic game room tour that I keep talking about coming on Wednesday. Also, what I haven't mentioned yet is I've got a CX lottery for a game that I've got quite a bit of history with that hopefully is going to be in good condition and legit <laughs> that I can add to my Super Nintendo wall. Um, and what dwarfs that is I've got a game coming that I bought privately which... It's probably the second most expensive or second most valuable, should I say, game that I'm going to own. I can't wait to have it. It's a game that I didn't have my Marade of. I've always wanted it, but like because of the value of it, it wasn't realistic. But I got offered it at such a good price that I couldn't say no. So that should be here tomorrow, actually. So that's going to be real early on next week's vlog. Uh, so yeah, really excited to be adding that. And yeah, just taking stock of what's been a great week. And sometimes you have to sit back and like think about things and... Like I say, I had a lot of time spent with my little man. I was really happy we managed to do that snack thing together and we had a day out at the cinema and the generosity of people who watch the channel. Uh, massive shout out to Jack who sent me the Wii U and everything Kev's done for me and spending the day with him. And yeah, it's just like blessings on blessings, man. I'm just feeling real good right now. Uh, I'm going to go and edit this vlog now, get it all together. Um, actually, I'm forgetting the giveaway. Um, I haven't had a chance to go through it yet. There's been so many people enter for that, which uh, I'm very thankful for. I'm going to pick a winner. I'll do that later on tonight. So I'll be putting the winner on screen right here. So congratulations. Shout out to the winner. But that's just the start. There's going to be loads more giveaways. I'll probably do another giveaway on next week's vlog. Um, I try and give away as much as I can. I just want to thank you people for taking your time to watch these videos. And if I can uh, give things away to you people that spend your time watching the content I make, then yeah, um, I'm happy to do so. So yeah, man, uh, much appreciated as always to everybody that takes the time to watch the vlogs this long. Um, again, if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. But yeah, play your games, keep it retro. I'll see you on Wednesday for that rune tour in a bit. Have a great Sunday. Retro ghetto. <laughs> 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 <laughs>